I'm going to finally be doing uh, the update on Riley from our appointment in Cincinnati a couple weeks ago. Feels like two weeks now, I want to say. And it was the end of July. So, like two weeks, I think. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to kind of be explaining um, why we had to urgently go there. Um, what led up to that and kind of what came out of it and our plan from here on out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, um, as most of you know, a couple weeks ago, um, Riley's neurologist decided that he wanted to see her urgently. Um, so her neurologist is in Cincinnati, so that meant that we kind of had to drop everything on a short notice and drive to Cincinnati, which was no big deal. Um, the reasoning behind this was the couple weeks leading up to that, um, we had noticed that Riley was kind of walking differently and weirdly, so her gait had changed pretty significantly. Her physical therapist had noticed it too, um, and we kind of all across the board were kind of concerned about it, um, and then her cognitive abilities had kind of started decreasing also. Um, I sent a few videos of her walking to her neurologist, um, and I sent them over a few different days, and it kind of seemed like it was progressing and getting worse, so he wanted to see us urgently so he could lay his eyes on her and make sure there was nothing more serious going on, um, because there was a few things thrown out there, like MS, um, CP, um, a couple different, um, muscle diseases and things like that, so we wanted to make sure that none of that was going on and that it was most likely just her seizures or medications and things like that. Um, so we went up there, um, she got an EEG done the day before her appointment, so we went up a day early, um, that showed, kind of was basically the same as all her other EEG, she didn't have any seizures during the EEG. Um, it was only an hour long. Um, it showed the side effects from some of her medications, um, which sometimes it's harder to see if there's any smaller abnormalities when she's on all of her medications um, because it's controlling those, and it, a couple of them create like a certain type of brain wave that kind of makes it hard to see if there's any smaller abnormalities going on. But, um, it didn't show anything super concerning, just her normal flowing of her brain waves, um, and the epileptic discharges. Um, it did show that she was having focal and generalized seizures, um, that they were coming from multiple parts of her brain, so that meant they were generalized. She has generalized seizures and focal um, where they start in the right side of her brain, um, and then also where it kind of starts and goes all over. Um, so, he wasn't really concerned about her EEG, because it basically looked like how her last EEG looked. Um, and then he, um, upon examining her, he didn't think anything else seriously was going on. He thinks it's just a combination of her seizures, um, the possibility that she's having different types and we're not noticing them, or she's having really fast, quick ones that we're not noticing, then also the possibility that she's having them in her sleep, um, and we're not seeing them. Sometimes we don't catch them, even on the monitor, um, sometimes it's really hard, we try our best, but sometimes we just miss them, um, so... And on top of that, he also thinks um, some of her medications are causing these issues um, because she is on a lot of um, sedating medications and bendo, I think they're benos or bendo beans or something like that. I don't know the name of them. Um, she's on multiple ones of those. And so what he said he thinks is going on is that at certain, time, at certain times of the day when we notice it's more prominent, most likely, um, her levels of medica- of those medications are becoming toxic in her brain at that point, or in her body, um, and that her levels fluctuate throughout the day, um, and that's why we see it get worse at certain times. 
Um, so where that kind of leaves us is in a few places. So um, Riley does also have her VNS, but we don't want to mess with that anymore right now. We want to leave it at the setting it is as right now because um, it does kind of bother her, especially if we swipe the VNS magnet um, when she's alert. So like if she has a fast seizure and we swipe it after the seizure and she's alert, she really doesn't like it. It bothers her. Then when it goes off by itself, it bothers her too. So we're going to leave it that way. Um, there is one medication, her Vimpat, that we have tried to wean her off before. Um, she used to be on 10 mLs of it um, three times a day, and now she's down to 4 mLs twice a day is what we got her down to um, before her seizures started getting out of control again. So his, what he really wants to do is get her off of that because he just doesn't think it's the right medication for her or really helping her a whole lot. Um, with her types of seizures and the way they are changing and progressing. He just doesn't think it's the right medication for her anymore. Um, and then he also wants to wean her down on her auntie and her clonopin. Um, so how we are going to achieve that, um, we had the option of adding another medication, but instead of doing that right now, um, we are trying to get her into keto and we're going to try to do that. Um, that's what he ideally wants us to do, but he wanted us to do it locally in Atlanta. And after filling out all the paperwork and stuff, the keto clinic here won't see Riley because we do, her primary neurologist is in Cincinnati, even though we do have a local neurologist to show up, um, just so that we see every six months, just to oversee um, everything and stay with someone locally. Um, just so we're established with someone. They won't do it, so I did call her neurologist in Cincinnati, um, and they were like, as long as you want to do the keto here and you're okay with that, we should be able to do it. Um, we just have to wait for her neurologist or is out of town for two weeks. Um, I think they called me, I think I called them last week, so I think this is his last week out, and I should be hearing something next week. Um, what well, our next steps is the dietitian, the keto dietitian is going to talk to him to see what Riley's next steps are. Hopefully he'll still want to do it. There's a chance he'll decide no because we can't do it locally. He doesn't want to do it. And at that point we will um, have to change up her medications and put her on a different medication, um, which is what we're trying not to do. Um, down the road at some point, he does want to do a long, another long stay in the EMU in Cincinnati. Um, the last time we had one in Cincinnati, we didn't take her off of her medications. It was just a three-day one. Um, it was when we first got established with them, and it was just to see kind of where her baseline was, because um, it had been a while since she had had an EEG, so he just wanted to see where we were at with everything that. Uh, so this time it would be longer. It would be five five to ten day stay depending on depending on how everything went and what they saw, found and saw um, so what that would entail is weaning her off her medications normally they do it start wing, weaning them off a day or two before they come in so we're not in the hospital for as many days but because we live so far away he said most likely would only start doing it the night before unless we drove up a few days before her EMU stay um, and then really kind of just cut her off uh, cold turkey once we got into the hospital uh, do it a little faster than he normally would do um, but we are going to wait because she's semi-stable right now um, and because of COVID um, I would have to be there for the whole entire stay and I wouldn't be able to leave. I wouldn't be able to have Colton with me. Last time Colton stayed with me um, and my mom stayed with me while she went home at night. Well, she went to a hotel at night. But um, because during EMU stays, a parent or an adult has to be in the room at all times and not having somebody be able to come in and relieve me so I can go take a break or get coffee or something like that. Um, because it's not urgent, he feels like it doesn't need to be done right now. We're going to hold off and try to wait till after COVID. Um, so 
that's basically the rundown of how it went. Um, she did have to get an EKG and blood work done while we were there, um, since to, before we start the keto. Um, all of those, I think most of them came back fine. I think a couple of them came back slightly abnormal, but nothing concerning. Um, her EKG was fine. So, where we're at right now is kind of just a waiting game. Um, she is, she does seem to be doing better, um, now she's having more better days than bad days. Um, so that is a good thing. Her walking, um, does seem to be improving. So, um, hoping that we can just get her on keto and hopefully get her down on some of her medications because... Quite frankly, she's just on a lot of medications, and we just don't want to have her on them anymore if she doesn't have to be. Of course, if she needs to be, then that's fine, that's what we'll do, but it's not a great quality of life for anyone, especially a child, um, especially on top of the seizures. So, um, like, if they were controlling them, we wouldn't even mess with them, and they are controlling them to a point, so it is kind of nerve-wracking to start messing with them and decreasing them because um, we have tried a few times and we've been able to decrease some medications but not get her completely off so that's the plan from now um, and hopefully that's what we can achieve um, so hopefully I should be hearing back from her neurologist um, within the next week or two of what the next plan is what the next step is um, and as soon as I hear anything from them, I will be sure to let y'all know. Um, so thank you for watching our video today and, um, hanging around with us in this journey. I know it took me a really long time to get this, um, filmed and up, but we've just been super busy. So many things with the house and everything going on, um, my appointments with everyone else, um, in the house. So thank you for hanging in there and bearing with us, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye!